Alright, I'm going to walk around my yard and try to find a few wild edible plants. Some thistle. I believe that's sow thistle because it's got that curl on the leaf. Oh! And some pony's foot. Looks like dollar weed, but see how it's got that little. So that's pony's foot. I've also found some prickly lettuce. You can tell by the underneath underneath the leaves I don't know if you can't see it but there are little spines spines on the underneath of the leaves you can eat the leaves the young leaves and the unopened flower buds and I think they contain Vitamins A, B, and some other minerals. All right, and something else I found. I've been looking this for this for a while. Lamb's quarter. The leaves shaped just like that. Let me see. But yeah, this is lamb's quarter. I just read on foragingtexas.com that it is high in I think vitamin A C K and B minerals and uh, seeds can be ground up into flour for and have a lot of protein so that's an awesome plant I've been looking for this one for a while I like finding that Here looks like some milk thistle. Nice purple flower. You have to cut the spines off the leaves before you eat them. And you can eat the the young flowers. It can be steamed. I've also found some plantain. The plantain has the veins go all the way along up and down the leaf. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. And it has these little seed pods which those are pretty tasty. You eat them. And the leaves are good for if you get an insect bite, you can chew it up and put it on the insect bite to help relieve the pain and the sting. So that's another really beneficial plant. And I believe what I found right here is called Black Nightshade. The, you do not want to eat the green berries and the leaves the, the ripe berries and the leaves are edible the green berries and the leaves have I think uh, concentrated alkaloids so if you eat the leaves you probably want to cook them that would reduce the toxicity of it Let's see what else we... Lots and lots of chickweed. Lots of pony's foot. And of course we got this wild grapes. 
They're smothering the oleander plant. Bananas are not wild. Now we've got the uh, Okay, we got a wood sorrel. Looks like clover. A lot of people think it's clover. It's really nice and sour. And what I believe we have right, yeah, right here. The Japanese hawkweed. Of course, roses that are edible, but they're not wild. Here's some, here's some nicer size wood sorrel. The heart-shaped leaves are wood sorrel. More Japanese hawkweed right there. I know canna lilies aren't really wild, but the young shoots and the roots of the canna lily are edible. I've read that Native Americans ate the canna lily roots. Also, I found some greenbrier sticker vines. And from what I was told on Foraging Texas, you know, you can eat the, the tips. The tips are good. You eat them like asparagus. And the roots, the roots are like a lot of carbs. But one way to identify the greenbrier that's edible is if it has thorns, thorns, and tendrils. A little twisty curly things so it's got to have both of those or else it's something else uh, people have been eating the roots of that plant for a long time and then here we got this is native to Texas the Turks cap you can eat the flowers and uh, and the leaves and it makes like the little seed pods that it makes later. They look like little apples. Yeah. And I like them. You walk on nature trails and eat the uh, Turk's cat flowers and the little seed pod little apples. They're really good. All the cleaver seems to be gone. I guess it's starting to warm up. Hey, Coco. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I guess that's about all we're going to find today. Bye-bye. And never eat wild plants unless you're one hundred percent sure what you're getting, what you're eating. So, you know, don't trust me. Look it up. Make sure.